Our next bout features a fighter joining us from Galesburg, Iowa. Make some noise for Jake Wingo. Wingo. I'm from Galesburg, Illinois. I've trained in a lot of different places, but the last, the most recent places I've trained are GYAC and Ekim Karate. I get a weird feeling before I go in there, and I love the feeling. I mean, every time I go in there, I kind of wonder why I'm going in there, but I still do it. It's just fun. See what you're gonna do. See what you're made of. I'm just going with the flow. I'm just trying to go off my instinct. And see where it takes me. Whatever he does, I'm gonna do something different. Depends on what's going on. Thinking all kinds of different things. Well, actually, I'm not really thinking of much at all. Actually, when I'm in there, I'm just trying to feel it out. I'm just feeling it out, trying to go where I can. With it. If I see an opening, I'm gonna take advantage of it. But everybody has different openings, so you never know. You gotta figure it out when you're in there. Nothing. I ain't got shit to say to him. Now I know I can come out with the win in this fight. Making his way to the cage tonight is Jake Wingo. Now I have a question. I'm not a fighter, of course. You're a fighter. You come to the ring before. What type of preparation goes into the walkout? Like, how much time do you take to think about what you're going to do, what type of song, how you're going to walk out, how long you're going to take before you start to go to the ring? Uh, that's that's one of the fun parts about it. I, I, put a, I put a decent amount of time into it, uh, listening to a lot of music myself. Uh, the songs that give you goosebumps in the car, the songs when you're working out that push you a little bit farther, you kind of put those in a list and then listen to the words. Uh, you know, if it's fight theme, that's, that's always a cool advantage. Uh, it's gotta mean something to you you know i know one of my favorites recently was royce arnold coming out to hometown he was fighting in rock island that was one that you know resonated in my brain that was awesome to come out of something like that um i've switched it up the last couple times of you know rock rap uh, metal just it's whatever you're feeling at that time in your training camp but yeah i mean i, I put a decent amount of time and thought into it because it's what's representing you it's the first thing that people hear Nathan Garrett. My name's Nathan Nasty Garrett. I train at a Central Illinois Combat Club. We train hard. Uh, we go. The, we can go the distance. Uh, I got decent wrestling. Working on my jujitsu. I'm ready to stand and bang. Well, I heard Jake uh, called me out, so it's gonna be. A, I think it's gonna be a good fight. And the words of David Harris, I'm in it to win it, son. So. I'm just ready to grind it out. Uh, I can go the distance, and I got a lot of heart. All I know is, Jake, you better bring your A game, son, for all that trash you were talking about. Making his way to the cage in the seventh fight of the night out of Central Illinois Combat Club in Monmouth, Illinois, Nasty Nate Garrett. Now I got another question. I know you're a fighter. Yes. And we just got to talking about the walkout. Is it better, or do you feel more comfortable walking out first or second? I like walking out second. Uh, I got a lot of energy. Um, I don't know. Uh, standing in there and waiting and, and hearing your opponent's song and, and just waiting in there, I don't. I don't like that. So if I if I get a choice, I like coming out second. Uh, it just. Right when you get in there, uh, it's about a minute or less till you fight. If you walk in first, you still got two, three minutes. Uh, I like my song to come on and walk in the cage, get my name sight, heard, and then go. I would think that coming out first, you're, you're almost like a caged animal. There's no way that I could just be standing there. You know, I'd have to be moving, trying to keep my body warm, you know, getting ready to go, getting mentally prepared. But it has to be a little bit of advantage, I would think, to come out second where you don't have to really wait like that. It is. It is an advantage. But it's also, if you need that extra time to step in the ring and take two minutes to calm yourself down, uh, you don't get that if you're the second fighter. You get your Vaseline on, you go in there, you're fighting. First fighter gets a couple minutes to collect his thoughts and go. So it's got pros and cons both sides. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be our seventh bout of the evening and is scheduled for three rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, three inches tall, and weighing in at 132 pounds. He's trained by and sponsored by Ethan Scarlatti and GYAC Boxing. 
Joining us from Galesburg, Illinois, Jake Wingo! And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighed in at 130 and 1 half pounds. He trains with Central Illinois Combat Club and is sponsored by Fade to Black MMA, Rares Collision, Shoot to Kill MMA, and Keister's Tire Center. Joining us from Mamba, Illinois, Nathan Nasty Garrett! Jake Wingo versus Nathan Garrett. Jake Wingo in the gray and white bad boy shorts, and Nathan Garrett in the red and white Hayabusa. And Nathan Garrett said before he's you know it's four and three and he got called out for this fight. Uh, Jake Wingo landing big shots early on. And he's also trying to jump on top on his back. Good job for Garrett, uh, kind of shaking him off and not let him get that early on. That would be devastating to get your back taken in the first ten seconds of the fight. And it has to be tough to start out the fight already on your heels a little bit. Right, and Jake Wingo has been a perfect spot right there to throw a knee, and he and Garrett saw that and stuck his knee in. He needs to be careful right now, going for that single leg. He doesn't get caught in the guillotine. Uh, and to keep his eyes in the sky, like I like to say, and make sure. But it's in tight. It's in very tight right now. Switches positions right now. Garrett does. Uh, Jake Wingo. And this looks like he's trying to grab that foot so that he can slide out. And pull it out, and then you're on your feet. There we go. And now he's on his butt. A little bit better, but uh, still got that in tight. The arm is in there, and he just needs to sit back, and it's very close. Now, how tough is it if you're holding that guillotine in there and the person isn't tapping? Yeah, you get your arms higher like you that? Are, he's expending a ton of energy in his arms right now, and that's, you hear that term, gas your arms out. So when he goes back to stand up, if it goes back standing, uh, watch that right arm. He's not gonna, it's not going to be up as high as you think it is. Or it should be, at, at, in fact. Jake Garrett Wingo, showing, a lot of, yeah. showing a lot of fortitude right now to be able to withstand him. Nate Garrett walking his way back up, standing up, going for the double. Uh, watch. Wingo needs to watch out. Doesn't grab the cage, but he's got double leg. He can't grab the shorts. Good job from the referee. Uh, back to a single. Uh, Nathan Garrett's doing a great job right now of, of working while caught in a guillotine. Which is something that you just don't see very often. I mean, he's keeping his composure. It's very frustrating to Jake Wingo, as you can see on his face. Right, and I know that Ringo's arm has to be very tired yeah, at this and point. and if this goes standing again and, and you take the traditional boxing or tie stance, you're going to see that arm lower because it's tired. And speaking it's, of what you're saying about being discouraged, it, it, it would be discouraging to, to have this locked in for as long as he's had it in there and right. not be able to get that submission. And that's the difference between a high-level jiu-jitsu guy and there. That arm is low. It's not even up. You know, that arm is down. It's, that's how tired he is right there. Right. So he's definitely going to have to change his, his strategy up a little bit Garrett's to take advantage of that. Too, as you can see, uh, both fighters exhausted right now from almost spending three minutes in a guillotine fighting for to get out of it. Oh, glands a kick right there. And a the body kick too and goes back into the guillotine. Uh, Nathan Garrett took a huge kick right there. He got yep. caught in the guillotine again. Uh, that arm's got to be dead, but still... Uh, yeah, he's still able to hold it in there. And, and Garrett doing a great job of putting that arm in the way, kind of blocking that knee from getting his... He's got his knee on the ground now, so you cannot knee him right now. Uh, I always had a lot of training with that and knowing what to do when you're in this position. Right. And smart to keep his knee down. Now he can get knee. And it looks like he took a knee to the groin right there, uh, but it's the end of the round. Both fighters exhausted right now. And you can really see it on their faces. I, I couldn't imagine being stuck in a guillotine like that or even holding a guillotine for that long. Right. And, and you know, his arms are gassed. Uh, Wingo's corner a little bit uh, slow to come out with his bench. Yeah, but kind of slow and nonchalant, too, you know? You know, he needs his breath right now more than ever. Now, when you came, now it's your second time doing this. Um, what was something that you were excited to come back and see tonight that you that you liked from the first time doing this? Oh my goodness! I mean, it's it's just the action. You know, I've never I've been to to MMA events before where you know you sit back and you watch it, but actually being able to commentate, sit really close to the ring, you can actually feel some of these shots. So that's the one thing that I'm very excited about doing this time. And I'm glad you got to do this on an Extreme Cage Rental uh, Family Mike Goodwin show because they 
do so much for the fans and everybody watching and on the DVDs and everything. Uh, they go above and beyond. So a big shout out to Mike Goodwin, Extreme Cage Reynolds, Mindprint, everybody that has something to do with this tonight. Uh, thank you from the MMA community. Definitely. Oh yeah, definitely. I couldn't imagine how much time and effort they put into this. I mean, we kind of come in, we do our work on the outside, but they they're working weeks, months doing these events. Non stop, non stop. Round two. Let's see who's got more gas right now. Nathan Garrett or Jake Wingo. Wingo going for that big shot early. Yeah, looks like he got a little bit of gas left in his arms now. Looking for that big shot. Big kick. And both of these guys definitely really trying to fill each other out. I don't think they really want to go back to what they were doing yeah, the last round. You can see when Wingo's ready to take a hit. His, his hips kind of go up and he's cocked ready to go. Lands a big shot again. Going big for the, shot. Trying for the guillotine again. Doesn't get it. Good job for uh, Nathan Garrett looking for blocking it this time again. Now, what is your strategy when you're pressed up against the cage like this? You want to get under the hooks, underneath the armpits, and swing the opponent around so his back's against it. Looking to get that underhook. Right now, he's got one underhook. Uh, he can't grab the cage. It's a good job of referee. He was chopping. Now, you will take a little warning, and then a point's taken away. Uh, it's extremely big advantage if you'd like that to grab on the cage. Uh, so, good job from the referee for giving the warning. That's so, grabbing onto the cage and kind of pinning him in, and there's no way you can really get out of that. Right. Yeah, it's hard enough when your back's up against the cage, let alone if you know you're enclosed in from the grip. Yeah, oh. one last <laughs> kick again. <laughs> it was, now, see, that was a little bit of gamesmanship. That's what I would call that. Right. You know, you put your hand up, trying to be a sportsman, but also oh, coming in and being ready to hit. again for the third time. Uh, good sport, actually, saying, hold on, hold on put your mouth guard back in. Uh, that, very nice to see, actually. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of psychological warfare that goes into these fights. He also like, gets a breather from that. Oh, yeah, and both of these guys, you can tell that they thought about this a little bit, and they probably have some of these things planned. Right. Now they're methodically thinking what's the next shot going to be because it's very important uh, right now in the second round. This may see the first fight of the night go to the third round. Oh, yeah. Ringo really uh, loading up on those kicks. Lands it again. Yeah, Back taking a big shot to right the head, too. Uh, Both of these guys definitely Garrett, aren't afraid to trade. Right, Garrett landing a few of his own, too. It's uh, Lands that big kick again, pushes off a little bit. Very tired, hands down, but it's kind of one for one right now. Both of these guys definitely zapping for auction right now. Right, Wingo kind of went in for the kill right there. Did land a couple more, lands a few more. So Wingo taking the advantage of punches landed right now. And Wingo has his arms down to the side, but he's still able to throw these punches and connect them. Right, and that's uh, against the fighter when you find somebody with his hands down. It's very frustrating. Goes in for the guillotine and choke again. Can't imagine he's got too much left though. Uh, now looking for a. Uh, and I feel like Garrett, Garrett was able to power out of that pretty easily. Yeah, he spun out of it. Uh, and now looking to kind of get on a hip. You never want to be completely on your butt. He's good he's, that he's on his hip. Trying to get uh, a side choke. You think you take, try to take a few shots to the head right here too. Right. And actually for the jujitsu guys watching, I know that they were so excited. To, that was the first step of the twister move, which is Eddie Bravo's extremely advanced jujitsu move, the twister, when you got your opponent on the side, uh, you crank your head, you crank the neck, you twist your body over so you get the guy in like a pretzel twisting motion. Uh, so. Now, did you say something about pretzels? I like pretzels. Right. I, didn't any, any move, pretzels. I like moves that are named after food. That's one of my things. And if you ever go to my website, and along with my guys, at www.thejumpoffpodcast.com, one of the things that you'll notice if you pay attention to my shows is I like to talk about food. I also like to talk about other things, but food is one of my favorites. So. And utensils that open food, because I know I can tell you about the can opener as well. See, that's another one. That's so, another one. And, you know, next time I'm on the Navy on the Jump Off podcast, I can uh, bring a list of, of unique names in jiu-jitsu, and uh, we can break them down and, and see what we can do. That sounds right. like a plan. Now, I know we're getting ready for the third and final round. This is the first fight that we've had tonight that's went three, so this is where conditioning comes into play. This is where you see who's been uh, sprinting, who's been doing their strength and conditioning. Um, diet right now is big fat, you know. And it, just, it all comes down to right now. This is, this is the championship round, you know, per se, without the actual belt on the line. Third round. You lay it, you leave it all here. Everything you train for is in this round right now. Yeah, it makes no sense to go outside of this and leave something in the ring. No. 
You leave it all there, you throw caution to the wind, and you go. And that's what both fighters are doing right now. Gary just really throwing. Uh, he knows he's got Wingo tired with his arms down. But, you know, a lot of damage to Wingo. Even though he's been on the aggressor, his back is welted up. Oh, yeah, big time. So, so you know that he's doing some damage. Right, they both have some welts on them, and they're both tired. And they, so, big overhand uh, from Garrett. Both of these guys really don't know that they want to take it to enclosed balance, so they're, they're going to try to trade shots. And Wingo's guillotine can't possibly have very much left on it, but it is something that he can throw on to catch his breath. But you really don't want to do that in the third round. And those kicks are very effective, though, that he's throwing right now. Now, if your condition is right, this is where you can really take advantage. Right. Wingo's got great technique with kicks, so... Uh, all these punches he's throwing, he's got a kick in arsenal too, so. Right, and it looks like Wingo's able to deflect a lot of those punches too. Right, Garrett throwing some knees right now, uh, pepper up the stomach, test that gas tank even more in the third round. Right there's where you saw the underhook and spin around, like we were talking about earlier. He has to make sure he's not grabbing the cage though. Right. Great job right there. Goes down for the single leg. Uh, he gets it, but, you know, gets in the guillotine again. Pops his head out, which is great. Good job. Right now, we just want to keep staying active. Punch, punch, punch. It doesn't have to be as hard, but you they like the ball they do. Especially with something like this, you know, it might come down to the judges. So you want to be able to slay those judges right now. Gary's doing a great job of just staying active. Punch, punch, punch. Keep moving. Right now, he needs to tread that arm uh, if he wants that. Both guys' corners yelling at them right now right. to give their all. It's the last minute of the fight. you got to keep moving. You don't want to leave it in the hands of the referee. You want to go out with a bang. Uh, Wingo needs to get to a hip and get off his back. Right now, uh, Garrett's definitely in the advantage, laying all his way down. Nice reversal from Wingo right now. And needs to do uh, some punching of his own to kind of make up for Leon's back the last minute. It looks like he's trying to get a guillotine in of his own. Wingo is going in for his signature guillotine again. Uh, right now, Garrett needs to make sure that he doesn't get trapped in it and uh, kind of face his face towards uh, Wingo right now. Oh, his body, right. Make sure he's looking at him and there. He lets it up because his arms is gassed. Ten seconds left in the fight. Uh, everything they've got needs to come out right now. Oh, yeah, you got to let everything fly. You know, Nate Garrett is in a dominant position, but Wingo is you know, a little more effective on the ground. And that's what judges look at. Great sign of sportsmanship helping each oh, other yeah, out. Definitely, definitely. Nice fight, very nice fight. Went three rounds. I would not want to be a judge right now because that was really close. That was tough. And that's the saying in MMA that you hear all the time: don't leave it in the judges' hands because the, you know, depending on you know, you can you you judge on aggression and time on your back and kicks landed, kicks thrown. I mean, there's so much in you know and. Uh, in hometown, plays an advantage too, unfortunately, sometimes, or oh, yeah, definitely. from the hometown. Definitely. Um, so, uh, really, anybody's game right here with, the, with a fight like that between Jake Wingo and Nathan Garrett going three rounds here in Knoxville. Great way to go into the intermission before the night's main card. Looks like the scores are in and we're gonna get them announced, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the judges' scorecards for our decision. All three judges scored this contest 29 28, declaring your winner by unanimous decision. Jake Wingo takes home the unanimous judge's decision tonight here in Knoxville over Nathan Garrett, whose record goes to 4 and 4.